Um, I'm referring back to the, your Stravinsky quote. What's a good way for you, okay, it was about constraint or like restricting yourself, right? So, I mean, everybody here in this room is different, but how do you restrict yourself? That's a pretty vague question, no, but. I get it. I think I get it. Go ahead. Um, well, <laughs> I didn't for a long time. I, uh, you know, I, I grew up listening to way too much Rush. <laughs> yeah. On, Rush. Hello, Rush. <laughs> um, but that's part of the reason that I make my living from more pop music, is it's so hard to, it's, it's easy to write a good song, a good three, four minute song. It's masochism, almost impossible to write a great one because it's such a small box. And so for me, um, the, the career path that I've chosen, the music I work on isn't what I listen to at home at all. Um, but there's a, ch there, there, there's a huge challenge in it for me to, to try and get, make that box as, as moving, as pleasing as possible. So for me, that's one way I really, um, I don't know if I'm explaining this very well. You're saying uh, you just like limit, actually maybe I don't understand, <laughs> sorry. Maybe you should, ex see, because I thought you were going to say something about practicing, like your practice techniques. Maybe that's because I am here, and like that's all we do here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We go to the, we go to the boxes on the second floor, and right. you know, practice those things every day. But I'm so talking more about your output. You're of what talking you about stylistic, right? What you do with all that practice. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. I mean, Stravinsky also said that he, the first thing he would do when he sat down to compose something is he would figure out what he didn't want to write. That's the first thing he would do, is, uh, and he would figure out the key that he wanted to start and this, this, the scale, the, the tonality of what he wanted to start. He would never sit down and go, look at all these 88 keys when I'm, I'm just all right, anything. Opposite. He would, uh, in, you know, and his music doesn't really sound like he did that. That's what, to me, is the kicker of him saying all that. It's, you know, you'd think that some guy saying that would be writing Mozart. Um, but his stuff is, you know, crazy sounding. Does that help at all? I mean, for, you should practice your butt off, you should continue going to those booths and, and doing all that, but I'm, what I'm talking about is, you know, where you set your sights with all that firepower afterwards. And it's kind of back to the less is more thing too. That took me forever to learn. Um, again, back to the Neil Peart influence, like just, you know, it was fun to be really indulgent and it's, and you have to have that in your, I think, to be a great musician. Back to what Denny was saying at the beginning of this, you know, um, I'm really, I don't mean this arrogantly at all, but I'm really overqualified for what I do for a living. But every once in a while I get to inject some of that stuff, you know, by writing a string arrangement or something, it's, it's just like, it's like letting all that, I think I'm rambling. <laughs> I think I'm off the plot, but like letting little bits of it out when it's needed. And sometimes you need to let the whole army loose. Um, it's just that, it's like just, just, you know, exercising a little restraint, I think creatively is a healthy thing to, it's like writing a book, you know, you want to, who's the hero of the book? Who's the hero of the story? Again, it's back to storytelling. You want to, the more focused you've got, the more pure the story is, in a way, the freer the art of it is. Does that make sense? Okay. Thank you. Hello. Hi. I have this problem where I'm, I have about five to eight pieces that I'm writing right now, and uh, I write about maybe 30 bars of it, get the melody, get the head, get the groove, bass line. And then I just kind of freeze up and just forget like what I'm writing, mm -hmm. like the style and what I'm trying to get across. And how do you, uh, how do you get over that problem? Because uh, I'm kind of in a big rut. Writing is hard, I think. I'm going to talk a lot more about writing in the afternoon clinic. Because um, you can't control it, right? It's, it's a little bit like, uh, not that I surf, but it's sort of like, I remember David Ockabendi and I talking about this a lot, actually. Like surfing uh, 
you, like you got to show up with your surfboard, and if the wind is blowing, great, and you're ready to surf. But if it's not blowing, it's out of your control. So I would recommend you walk away from it, let it go. The, and whenever I get in sort of a creative block, the more I push out and the more I chip away at it, maybe like one out of 20 times, I'll actually break through to something that I wouldn't have gotten had I not done that. But I've been on songwriting sessions with other people. I co-write a lot because I find there's just more wind in the sails for in a more pop song format. And if it's not happening after like an hour, let's just pull the plug, let's just call it a day. It's okay to do that. Wait, wait for it to come back to you. Well, you know, book authors have editors. We don't really have that as composers, but you can always, um, editing is so important. It's so important. That's mostly what I do as a record producer is just edit. That's why I sometimes refer to it as reducer, you know, uh, taking away and just leaving the good bits. I don't know, bounce it off friends you trust. Have, have uh, whatever you've written for, have them play it, see how it sounds, record it then listen to it outside the room so you can be super objective and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, you can cut. It's like making a movie, too. I mean, they will overshoot a lot. They'll have hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of footage. And you make the movie really in the editing room. And you rely on your editor. You know, the, the director will sometimes not even be in the room for a lot of it. So if you can find any kind of editing help, either from yourself by just getting it as far away from it as possible and then listening to it like it's somebody else's work, that's a good trick. Or, or actually having somebody else listen to it that you, that you trust. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pro Tools. Oh, it depends what, what I'm writing for. I mean, if I'm writing for someone that needs to read the notes, then I'll write it out. So I guess like an orchestral arrangement or string arrangement. Um, but all, at the end of the day, it's all what it sounds like. So I, I'll just, uh, for me, the most objective thing is to hear it through speakers. Because it's out of your head. There's no visual to distract. There's no people playing the music. It's just auditory. Um, and if it moves you through the speakers, then you're, you're doing well. If it doesn't, then you, you gotta fix something. Did that help? However you can edit, however you can, objectivity is gold in doing music. And it's really hard to do it when you're the one making the music. Um, but if whatever you can do to, to, to hear it like someone else who has, no, has never heard it before, if you can, whatever you can, trick you can pull to get to that space, it might help.